Well, good morning. Welcome to Debbie's Back Porch. You know, I'm always looking for a good bread recipe, and I found this little recipe on the King Arthur Flour website, and I made it, and oh my, it's magic bread. Easy peasy, no kneading, hardly much to do, and when you make it, you have enough for four days fresh bread. Let's get cooking. Now, when I say easy, I mean easy. I have this great big bowl here, which is about 40 years old. And I have seven cups of all-purpose unbleached King Arthur flour. I've added a tablespoonful of salt. And I'm going to mix those together a little bit. And I have this little dough scrape here, and I'm going to use it a good bit. You can use a spatula instead if you have it. But we're just going to mix this up, and you don't need your mixer for this. As truly, it will take longer to clean up your mixer than it will just to do it by hand. So I've got the salt mixed in, and then I'm going to add my yeast. Now I use SAF Instant Yeast. You can use Active Dry. I suggest you go ahead and buy some instant yeast because in all the recipes uh, that I've seen, you can use either one and instant's just easier. You can skip the proofing step. So I've put my yeast in. I'm going to mix that up a little bit. And this is pretty much it. The only other ingredient is three cups of warm water. And I'm using it straight out of the tap. I have good water. I can use it straight out of the tap. And I haven't heated it at all. Just as hot as it runs out of the tap, it's about 90 degrees. In this recipe, it doesn't matter that much. So I made a little well in the middle. The only thing that matters is don't get it too hot. Uh, room temperature would be okay. But don't get it over, say, 110 degrees. So I'm just going to mix it with this little blender, or this little scraper to start with, just until I get everything in together. And then when I get it pretty much pulled together, all the water in and get it pretty much pulled together, I'm going to switch over and mix this by hand, which is kind of messy, but not as messy as cleaning up your uh, mixer. Uh, and it's just easier for me to do. That way I can move it around and make sure that it picks up all the flour and that we don't have any dry spots in the middle. Now this is going to seem really dry as you're mixing it, but it won't stay that way when it starts to rest. And this old bowl you're looking at is an old Rubbermaid bowl I bought about 40 years ago and I use it a lot. And as it turns out, it's the only thing I have big enough to make this recipe in. Because if you make the whole recipe, you have to have a bowl that will hold six quarts, or a container that will hold six quarts. You could do it in a food grade bucket, or you could make half a recipe. Um, I'm, I've got my little scraper back, and I'm pulling it away from the bowl to make sure I've got everything incorporated in. And I'm just going to leave it in this bowl. Now, if you want to, you can mix it in a smaller bowl and grease this proofing bowl. Uh, but you don't have to, and I'll show you why. I just pulled it up to the middle, and I'm going to put my lid on. Now, this is going to rise for two hours just at room temperature. You don't have to have a warm spot. And we'll come back and check this in about two hours. You're going to be shocked. It's going to triple in size. I want you to look at this. Kind of surprised me. So we've got a whole bowl full. This is why you have to have a six quart container. See, it's a little shaky. It's not dry at all. Now all I'm going to do now is put the lid back on and put it in the fridge for another two hours or seven days. It'll last in the fridge for seven days. And the longer you leave it in there, the more sour it gets. If you wait longer, it tastes like sourdough bread. So they say. So we've waited our two hours. And I've got a little flour over here. I'm going to flour my hands. And I'm going to gently deflate this. 
and pull it away from the sides. Now it might be a little easier if I had oiled this bowl, but you don't have to and it's pulling away. And I'll let you see that texture. This is a very elastic uh, and, it, and it's smooth. It doesn't look as smooth as bread that had been kneaded for, you know, 6, 10, 12 minutes. But it's very smooth and it's not as sticky as it looks like. It's just loose. I guess they would call this a shaggy dough. So I'm going to shape it into sort of a rectangle, sort of, not not really, but sort of a rectangle. And then I'm going to cut off about a quarter of it. This is enough for four small loaves, and I'm going to make one small loaf to test it. And it should be around 13 ounces. And uh, you don't have to do it that way. You can go ahead and make half of it. Um, or you can cut it into thirds and make three. I, I'm here by myself most of the time, and I don't want a lot of bread. So what I'm going to do is, is make a quarter of it. And I'll put the lid on that and put it back in the fridge here in just, just a few minutes. I want to weigh it first. And you don't have to be exact. You can make it about any size you want. Uh, the recipe says the size of a softball or a grapefruit and uh, about 13 ounces. So I'm going to weigh this. I'll put just a little bit more on it. And you can really see the texture of it as it sits. It's, um, it's like the blob. And I'm, I'm aiming for about 13 ounces here. And that's close enough. Now we'll make our loaf. Now the recipe basically says you can make this in any shape you want. You can make it in a log. You can make it in a ball. Uh, you could put it in a loaf pan. I, I, I don't think you can braid it. it. It's too soft for that. But I'm just going to make a little round loaf here like a, a an artisan bread or artisanal bread because artisans are people, not bread. But I think a ball will be pretty and I can put it in one of my cast iron skillets because I really love to cook in cast iron. So I'm just forming it into a ball. I pinched it off at the bottom to make sure it's stuck together. And just any shape you want to make it. I think I could cut this into four and make four sandwich rolls. I may do that next time. So I've got a nine inch cast iron skillet. I have oiled it with just some neutral vegetable oil. I'm sprinkling a little cornmeal on the bottom. The recipe didn't say to do that, but I'm doing that because I think it gets a little crustier on the bottom. And I'm going to put this in here. Now I'm going to sprinkle pretty generously uh, some flour over the top because we don't cover this. We let it um, rise open without cover and the flour will help it retain its moisture. Now this dough is still cool from the fridge so it needs to rest and rise for about an hour. Uh, after 30 minutes I'm going to turn my oven on to 450 and I have a cast iron skillet in the bottom because we're going to make some steam. So it's risen, it's been an hour and it, it, it's got a lot of spring to it. Now I'm going to cut uh, some slashes in it. You can just use a straight razor or a really sharp knife. You really want to break the crust and go down about a quarter to a half an inch. I've got my little lom here which is basically just a holder for a razor blade. And when you do this it might deflate your loaf a little bit but it doesn't matter. It will rise back up in the oven. So my oven is preheated. I have a cast iron skillet uh, on the bottom rack. And I very quickly pour in a cup of hot water, not cold into your hot pan, hot water, and put my bread in the center of the oven. And I'm setting my timer for five minutes because I'm going to come back and spray this with the water. I've just got a little spritzer bottle here. I'm spraying it with warm water. This helps make the crust a little crustier and crunchier. 
Now 25 more minutes and we'll check the temperature. I'll be back. Boy, isn't that pretty? I'm checking the internal temperature. You want it to be between 190 and 200. Uh, if, if you're on the 200 side, and I am, next time I'll decrease the time about three minutes. And I'm going to transfer it over to a rack for cooling. Um, you want to let this cool about an hour. Don't. It, this is a small loaf, but you want to let it cool until it is uh, room temperature before you cut it. You know, this has a really nice crust on it. That spritz of water uh, really makes a difference. So I'm going to let you hear me as I cut it. And oh my, look at that. Just hearing it makes my mouth water. This calls for some butter. See those nice holes in there? I can't wait to see what I get after the dough's fermented a couple of days. Mm. And you have to hear this. Mm -mm. Just excuse my bad manners, but this is wonderful. I'm going to make this, well, I'm going to make it at least three more times because that's the dough that I have in the fridge. You're going to like it. Try it. It's magic bread. Thank you for joining us on Debbie's Back Porch. Hope to see you again tomorrow.